close your eyes and think about a perfect Greek holiday. Crystal blue waters, pristine white buildings. Is it possible that the first place that comes to your mind is Santorini? The quaint Mediterranean town that's a crowd favourite. Santorini is known for its breathtaking views. But if you're planning a vacation anytime soon, know that Santorini lies on an active volcano. According to reports, Santorini was devastated by a volcanic eruption once. It was one of the largest known volcanic eruptions in history, occurring some 3,600 years ago. It's said to have completely destroyed the ancient city, burying it under ash and debris. If you look at Santorini today, you would never guess that. But the town is part of the Hellenic Volcanic Arc, one of the most significant volcanic fields in Europe. In fact, East Mediterranean's most active volcano is located just kilometers away from Santorini. It's called Colombo. Colombo has been quiet for 400 years now, but that doesn't mean it's asleep. Geologists who monitor Colombo actually have a dire warning. They say it's only a matter of time before another big eruption hits. Sounds alarming, right? But time in geological years is a slow concept. The last time Colombo erupted was in 1650, so it could be another hundreds of years. While an eruption is not imminent, there's always a threat. But the good news is that volcanoes usually give a lot of warning. There's increased activity and smaller eruptions, so we will know well beforehand it seems. But for Santorini's locals, all business on the island is centered around the volcano. Volcanic soil, volcanic minerals, even the wine that's found here. It's from native grapes that grow in the soil. So they pay no heed to the eruption warnings. The volcano, for them, is what makes Santorini unique. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colonist.